Peter Sellers, the renowned actor and comedian of the 20th century, rose to fame from humble origins, captivating audiences with his exceptional impersonations and comedic creations. Initially gaining recognition through his performances in the BBC radio comedy series The Goon Show, Sellers became widely known for his comedic roles in movies like The Pink Panther and Doctor Strange Love. However, off-screen, Sellers battled with depression and insecurities. He faced prolonged health issues, particularly related to his heart, which may have contributed to his untimely demise in 1980. Just before his passing, Sellers received critical acclaim and an Academy Award nomination for his portrayal in Being There. His nuanced depiction of a simple and innocent gardener turned presidential advisor revitalized his career, which had been declining at the time. Beyond the laughter, Peter Sellers' life was a complex tapestry marked by failed marriages, health struggles, and a quest for self-identity. Although his personal demons tarnished his legacy, it remains a testament to the delicate interplay between brilliance and the human condition. Regrettably, he did not have the opportunity to fully embrace this new wave of success. Let us now delve deeply into the events that occurred behind the scenes and explore the reasons why Sellers' life was filled with complexities, ultimately resulting in his untimely death at the age of 54. But before we begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, and feel free to share in the comment section who you would like us to discuss in our next video. Peter Sellers was born on September 8, 1925, in South Sea, Portsmouth. His parents, Bill and Peg Sellers, were variety entertainers. Sellers had a close relationship with his mother, but he spent a lot of time alone as an only child. The family moved to Muswell Hill in North London in 1935, where Sellers attended St. Aloysius College, a Roman Catholic school. Despite his parents' different religious backgrounds, Sellers was fascinated by religion from a young age. He excelled in drawing at school and was known for his laziness, but was shielded from criticism by his natural talents. Sellers learned stagecraft while accompanying his family on the variety show circuit, but he had mixed feelings about show business due to conflicting encouragement from his parents. His father doubted his abilities, while his mother continuously encouraged him. During his time at St. Aloysius College, Sellers began developing his improvisational skills, influenced by early radio comedy shows. He and his friend Brian Connan enjoyed imitating people from the show Monday Night at 8. Peter Sellers' unpredictable behavior towards his loved ones was worsened by his reliance on alcohol and experimentation with drugs, as stated by the Daily Telegraph. During the 60s and 70s, it was not uncommon to find Hollywood actors who indulged in excessive drinking and lived fast-paced lives. However, the consequences of such a lifestyle were particularly devastating for Sellers and those in his inner circle. Notably, his health suffered greatly due to the detrimental effects of alcohol and drugs leading to his first heart attack before the age of 40, as reported by Roger Ebert. Unfortunately, Sellers did not receive adequate treatment for various reasons. The production companies that profited from his movies prioritized his commercial value over his well-being, as highlighted by The Guardian. Additionally, Sellers' strong superstitions, as mentioned by The Scotsman, led him to explore alternative methods rather than seeking decisive medical intervention from pulmonary specialists, which could have potentially improved his health. Furthermore, Sellers' refusal to change his lifestyle, which was further influenced by his fourth wife, Lynn Frederick, ensured that his health would inevitably deteriorate. Renowned for effortlessly transitioning between characters and effortlessly creating new ones, the enigmatic persona of Peter Sellers has proven elusive to define. According to Stanley Kubrick, Sellers' portrayal of roles in his iconic films exuded a naturalness that bordered on comic ecstasy, as stated by Den of Geek. 
Sella's versatility is particularly evident in Doctor Strange Love, where he masterfully portrayed three distinct characters. Numerous biographers have reported that Sellers himself struggled to establish a firm sense of identity. In a 1980 interview on the Today Show, he discussed a prevailing notion that had recently taken hold, suggesting that there was no true Peter Sellers. While Sellers refuted the notion that he was an empty vessel behind his various masks, the topic of his identity recurred throughout his career. In a memorable clip from The Muppet Show, Sellers, who had hosted the show as a multitude of characters, candidly told Kermit, There is no me. I had it surgically removed. However, the Daily Telegraph highlights that the origins of this selflessness may be rooted in a tragic childhood experience. Sellers, originally named Richard Henry Sellers, was given the name Peter as a tribute to his late older brother, who was stillborn. This sense of displaced identity haunted Sellers, yet it may have also fueled his remarkable ability to immerse himself in the minds of diverse characters. Peter Sellers had a tumultuous personal life, being married four times and gaining a reputation as a womanizer. He divorced his first wife, Anne, with whom he had two children in the early 1960s. According to The Guardian, his second wife, Swedish actress Britt Eklund, has recently spoken out about their difficult marriage. Eklund described Sellers as jealous, controlling, and abusive, suggesting that he may have had bipolar disorder. She mentioned that his relationships with women were characterized by bouts of depression and paranoia. When Eklund met Sellers, she was only 21 years old while he was 17 years her senior. Sellers had seen her photograph in a newspaper and expressed his desire to meet her. They soon got married, with Sellers announcing his intentions to the press before actually proposing to Eklund. Eklund revealed that Sellers had a significant influence on their lives together, even deciding what outfit she should wear. His impulsive decision to take a spontaneous holiday once led to Eklund losing her role in a Hollywood movie. She also shared instances of Sellers being both psychologically and physically abusive, resorting to throwing items and damaging property when things didn't go his way. Following his divorce from Eklund, Sellers went on to marry two more times. He first married aristocrat Miranda McMillan, Quarry, and later actress Lynn Frederick, whom he was married to at the time of his death. The emotional turmoil caused by Sellers' ego-driven behavior extended beyond his first wife, and to include his children as well. Sellers' public declaration of love for Sophia Loren in front of his children, particularly his son Michael, highlighted the insensitivity he displayed towards his family. Michael recounted a disturbing incident when his father woke him in the middle of the night to ask whether he should divorce his mother. This lack of consideration for his family's feelings was a recurring theme in Sellers' interactions with his children. Michael shared how, at the tender age of seven, his father demanded to know which parent he preferred, and when Michael chose his mother, Sellers reacted angrily. The following year, Sellers went as far as disowning Michael in a letter, suggesting that he take his mother's maiden name. Michael, along with his sisters Sarah and Victoria, later penned a best-selling book detailing the emotional abuse they endured from their troubled father. Despite intermittent contact, emotional distance, and unpredictable mood swings, the most devastating blow came at the time of Peter Sellers' passing. Sellers' first marriage to and how ended due to his infatuation with Italian page and screen idol Sophia Loren, with whom he worked on the 1960 movie The Millionaires. Sellers openly expressed his feelings for Loren, acting boyishly towards her on set and discussing her behavior with his family. Sellers even declared his love for Loren to his wife, despite Loren being married to Italian movie producer Carlo Ponti until his death in 2007. Sellers claimed to friends that he and Lauren were in a passionate love affair, but there is no evidence to support this. Michael Sellers suggests that Sellers' infatuation may have been a fantasy, 
fueled by his ego from working with a glamorous sex symbol. In his memoir and during his interview with The Scotsman, Michael Sellers vividly describes one of the more peculiar aspects of his father's behavior, his unwavering superstitions and strong belief in the supernatural. Regarded by many biographers as a manifestation of his neurotic desire to control his surroundings, Sellers' superstitious tendencies manifested in various ways. While some were common and harmless, like avoiding walking under ladders, his deepening fascination with the occult posed personal and professional challenges as he increasingly relied on horoscopes, fortune-telling, and psychic consultations to guide major life choices. Ed Sikoff recounts how, as early as 1958, Sellers consulted a clairvoyant named Maurice Woodruff every morning for readings. One prediction, that a film producer would offer him a role, may have seemed obvious for an actor seeking Hollywood success. However, this reading led Sellers to accept the very next role that came his way, which turned out to be the 1959 independent film The Mouse That Roared, produced by a newcomer named Walter Shinson. Such decision-making methods continued to shape Sellers' career trajectory, with Sikoff noting that in his darker moments, Sellers claimed to have been tormented by malevolent spirits. Dan Leno, a famous music hall entertainer and comedian from 1860 to 1904, had a life that mirrored Peter Sellers. Both were born into showbiz families and rose to fame in the London music halls. However, Leno struggled with addiction and mental health issues, much like Sellers. The details surrounding Leno's death remain unknown. Sellers believed he had a psychic connection with Leno, which he discovered through psychic readings. They were both members of the theatrical club The Grand Order of Water Rats, and Sellers claimed to hear Leno as an inner voice, guiding his decisions. Eventually, Sellers believed he was the reincarnation of Leno, considering their shared similarities. Peter Sellers' volatile temperament extended beyond his personal life, causing strain on his relationships and work collaborations. Director Peter Medak, a friend of Sellers and Spike Milligan, recounted the tumultuous production of the 1973 film The Ghost in the Noonday Sun in his documentary The Ghost of Peter Sellers. Sellers' erratic behavior, such as leaving Medak waiting at his house only to be found naked doing yoga, and allegedly feigning a heart attack to avoid filming, contributed to the movie's troubled production. Despite being described as an obsessive perfectionist, Sellers' challenging personality and unfortunate circumstances led to the film bypassing theatres and going straight to video. Peter Sellers had a complex relationship with his mother, Peg, as well. Peg's tragic loss of her first baby may have contributed to her spoiling Peter. In Sikoff's biography, Sellers' ex-wife, Anne, explains that the dynamic between Peter and his mother played a significant role in shaping his relationships with women later in life, despite disliking Anne and even telling her son that she was only interested in him for his physical appearance. Peg remained close to Sellers throughout his adulthood and excessively protected him, allowing his behavior to go unchecked. Some biographers argue that this resulted in Sellers remaining emotionally immature, expecting the women in his life to take on a motherly role. During the filming of the movie The Bobo in Italy in August 1966, Sellers received news that his mother had suffered a heart attack. Despite this, Sellers made the decision to stay on set, and unfortunately, his mother passed away shortly after. Her death had a profound impact on Sellers, and according to Sikoff, he believed he could communicate with her in the years that followed, much like he did with Dan Leno. In April 1964, Peter Sellers experienced a distressing period that his biographer, Ed Sikoff, refers to as Peter Sellers' deaths. 
This period began in a hotel room in Los Angeles, where Sellers was in bed with his 21-year-old wife, Britt Eakland, whom he had recently married. Sikoff's book includes direct quotes from Eakland, who revealed that the couple regularly used drugs, such as amyl nitrite or poppers, to enhance their sexual performance. According to Eakland, they would take the drug the nightly in their pursuit of the ultimate orgasm. However, on this particular night, their experimentation took a dangerous turn. Eakland returned from the bathroom to find Sellers collapsed on the bed, surrounded by spilled champagne, realizing that he was having a heart attack. Despite the severity of the situation, Sellers was not taken to Cedars of Lebanon Hospital until the following morning. Over the next few days, he suffered multiple heart attacks, with his heart stopping completely each time. Fortunately, he was revived each time using a defibrillator. Sikoff describes how television crews were already preparing potential obituaries upon hearing the news. Meanwhile, in between periods of unconsciousness, Sellers entertained children on the ward by performing songs and impersonations. Sellers continued to experience heart issues for the remainder of his life. One of the most controversial incidents in Peter Sellers' life took place after his passing, along with one of its most tragic subplots. During the reading of Sellers' will, it was discovered that the majority of the actor's substantial wealth, estimated to be around $7 million, was designated for his fourth wife, Lynn Frederick, whom he was married to at the time of his death. This aspect seemed relatively uncontroversial. However, the will also specified that each of Sellers' three children would only receive a mere $1,000 each. Initially, it appeared to be a final act of disdain from the unpredictable and emotionally troubled star. Nevertheless, evidence has emerged, in the form of a recently uncovered letter, indicating that Sellers had been attempting to alter the beneficiaries of his will prior to his demise, as reported by the BBC. Despite the pleas of Sellers' friend, Spike Milligan, Frederick refused to provide Sellers' three children with any additional portion of his fortune beyond what was allocated to them in the will, as stated by Sikoff. His book further reveals that Frederick, grappling with addiction, tragically passed away on April 27, 1994, at the young age of 39. New York Magazine hailed Peter Sellers' comedic brilliance in all of his films as Inspector Clouseau's. Spike Milligan, Sellers' friend and colleague, described him as having one of the most outstanding comic talents of his time. Filmmakers John and Roy Bolting praised Sellers as the greatest comic genius since Charles Chaplin. In the 1960s, Sellers was the ever-changing face of comedies and consistently dazzled audiences. In a 2005 poll, Sellers was voted the 14th greatest comedian by fellow comics and insiders. The Goon Show, in which Sellers starred, influenced the Monty Python performers, with John Cleese calling Sellers the greatest voiceman of all time. The Firesign Theatre, an American comedy troupe, credited the Goons as a major influence on their radio comedy style. Peter Cook regarded Sellers as the best comic actor in the world, and Stephen Mangan, Mike Myers, Alan Carr, and Rob Brydon all acknowledged Sellers' influence on their careers. Sellers' characters, such as Frundy Bakshi and Inspector Clouseau's, later inspired Rowan Atkinson's Mr. Bean and Johnny English. Sasha Baron Cohen also attributed his early ideas on comedy to Sellers. Will Ferrell admired Sellers' unique combination of subtlety and over-the-top performances. Members of Spinal Tap and talk show host Conan O'Brien were also influenced by Sellers. David Schwimmer praised Sellers' range and versatility, while Eddie Murphy and Chris Rock imitated Sellers' multi-character roles. Robin Williams considered Sellers' performances in Doctor Strangelove to be the epitome of acting. The Goons influenced a generation of comedians known as Alternative, including Eddie Izzard. The play being Sellers premiered in Australia in 1998, followed by an HBO film adaptation starring Jeffrey Rush. The film depicted Sellers' life of excess and allure. Thank you for tuning in. 
Remember to show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing.